that you speak what you want to be speaking. In your name, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Thank you. But first, I'd like to start out by thanking those who are watching via YouTube and via Facebook. I'd like to thank you in advance and to continue watching. For those of you who are in the Columbus area, feel free to come to Columbus Christian Center at 610 44th Street in Columbus, Georgia. Um, we'd be more than welcome to have you here. And again, I thank you for watching. Um, I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for your feedback. I thank you for just uh, uplifting me in this time. And thank you. Okay, let's get started here. Um, last week I came, when I came, we had some prayers that was um, kind of halted because I didn't have copies up, but I did make copies. But we're not going to start there. Um, we're going to start, um, I've told you all about door openers. I've told you um, about uh, things that, um, how we speak about people. Um, I've also covered um, faith is the key to deliverance. I've also covered what our part is in deliverance. <coughs> Today I want to cover the strong man. Now the strong man, excuse me, my bad Okay, the strong man. Now here is a major truth we'll, we will uh, be dealing with. We will go through a, we were gonna, we're gonna go through a study as we um, learn about what the strong man is. The strong man is the one that is behind everything. He's considered to be called the strong man. Um, you have to um, enter into a strong man's house and spoil all of his goods. Meaning that all the things that he tries to come at you with, um, with fear, with doubt, with anger, and all those things, those are part of the strong man's tactics. First we have to bind the strong man, and then we will be able to enter in and spoil his goods. And that's in Matthew, if you want to know more about that, that's in Matthew 12 and 29. We'll explain to you about the strong man. Okay, when a strong man armed, when a strong man armed keep the, keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a strength, when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overtake him and taketh from him all he all his armor wherein he trusted and divided his spoils, meaning that a godly person like like a deliverer, a person that's in deliverance, can can enter into a strong man's house and bind him up and take. Back all his all take back all the things which mean it will cast out anger, cast out fear, cast out all these things that we harbor inside of our body and not know that that's the strong man sitting inside of us watching. Okay, so who who and what and how does the strong man operate? The strong man comes into play. He can come into play through crisis if we have a, if we had an issue. Um, like, uh, I guess I'll use one example, um, death. If there was a death in the family and we um, dwell on that, dwell on, on that situation of that death, or if we go up to that person, and I need you to understand this, when someone dies, the last thing that you want to do is go up and kiss that dead person. Because now you will be walking around with the spirit of death on you. And if that spirit in which that has died was not ready to rest and was not ready to go, you will now carry that spirit on you. And you'll be wondering why you're going around with turmoil because you're carrying a spirit that wasn't ready to go in the first place. So now it has your body to occupy and do what it wants to do. That's the strong man, the spirit of death. In these two parable passages, Jesus called the demonic presence of a strong man who is the strong man. What is his name? What does he do? Once we know and once we know the answer to those questions, we can zero in and bind him in the name of Jesus, forbidding him to come back to harass us again. Then according to Matthew 18 and 18, we loose the power of God to fill our lives and repair the damage done by the strong man. It is possible to spend hours binding symptoms. 
the more the mortal the mortal blows come. However, when we sever the main, the main root, okay. So if hurt is something that we're dealing with, we have to find out what it was that caused that hurt to to enter in in the first place. Um, it could have come from you being a raped as a child or raped as an adult or it could have come from an abusive relationship and you have held on to that hurt, now that strong man gets stronger and stronger because now you have opened the door up to hurt. So now he's able to sit in there and dwell and he's dwelling as hurt. And now he'll send out all the other things that come along with hurt. Come along with hurt, depression. Um, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling uh, worthless, you're feeling low, you're feeling less than adequate. Um, these things are accompanied with hurt, but once you know the symptoms and once you know the cause in which got you to that place where you are hurt, you now have to renounce hurt, give up your right to be hurt, forgive those persons who hurt you, if it's possible to call those people out by name who's hurt you and release them. And once that's happened, then you can be taken through deliverance, whether it be by the laying of hands or you just releasing it. Okay, Lord, I'm going to give it to you. I'm not going to no longer hold this inside of me. So that hurt is considered to be a stronghold as well. Um, are we, uh, who is energizing the activities? If we do not take care of take care of it properly the first time, the problem will return. And it's like a carrot. When you pull up a carrot, you see all the roots of the carrot. Just like when you pull up the strong man, you have to get all those things that are rooted, that, that make him strong, that make him uh, powerful. And we feed on these things when we get, you know, get to certain uh, positions where we're anger. Anger is another opener. When we get angry, when you get angry, you're angry at people and you start to curse things and you start to, you know, then you start, you know, going back to, to what, you, what you're normally used to, to, to try to fight, but you can't fight because it's not a natural fight, it's a spiritual fight. And I just want to give you a, um, an example of a spiritual fight. Um, the other day, a, a gentleman came to my home and um, he was under witchcraft. He didn't know that he was under witchcraft, but I spotted that he was under witchcraft by the things in which he said, a deliverer must be very intent, intuitive to what a person is saying that way you can, you can discern what spirit in which he's dealing with. Um, he was dealing with, the, um, with a witchcraft. A person was putting witchcraft on him trying to get, them, get him to love them, trying to control what they do and who they're around so that they will look to them for their strength instead of looking to God. Um, and being that this person was a baby saint, he didn't know any better. Um, so I took this person through, the, through deliverance at my home, um, and I had him say some of these very prayers that we will say in, in, uh, later on in the class. Um, he said the prayers, and he was like, wow, you know, I feel, I can feel it lifting off of me. You can see the goosebumps coming up on his arm. You can see the hair standing up where he was actually, the, the spirit was actually leaving him as he was reading. Later on, as I proceeded to bring this person home, the devil tried to get me. Because of what I did, see, you have to understand when you're in deliverance and you're doing the will of God and you're trying to take care of God's people and you're taking people through deliverance, the devil does not want that. That person was, he wanted him. And I came in and intervened and covered him by the grace of God. As I was going down the street, I could hear him telling me, look out, look out, look out. But the devil had blinded my eyes. I didn't see anything. I just saw a street. The same street that I'm driving on is all that I saw was the same. It was the street. I didn't see anything, nowhere, no lights, no nothing, just the street. As he reached over and grabbed the steering wheel, I did the same and I turned it. And just as we both put our hands on the steering wheel and went to turn it, a big truck, a big black truck appeared in front of me. I just had to stop the car and I was like, Lord, where did this truck come from? Satan was trying to take us both out because of what I had done. Because I had took this man through deliverance and got rid of the things that Satan had 
put on him through another person and showed him the love of God and delivered this person from that, Satan was angry that he couldn't get that one, so now he's going to try to get us both, including me. So I sat there for a minute and I'm looking, I'm like, Lord, where did this truck come from? Because I, I, I've I, never, I've never, I mean, I know I've, I've been in spiritual warfare, yeah, but I've never experienced where he would manifest something like that trying to take me out. That was my first time experiencing that. So as we proceeded to drive, I said, no, I, I can't drive. I said, we need to jump out this car right now and thank Jesus. We both jumped out the car in the middle of the street and we just proceeded to jump up and down and say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Because by the grace of God, that close, we would have ran head into that car. And I said, I did not see it. There was no lights. There was no nothing. But when we both came on one accord and turned that wheel just a smidge, that big truck appeared. I'm talking about it must have been what you call them big old hummers. A big old, how are you going to miss a big old hummer sitting in the middle of the street? He blinded me. He took my sight and just showed me the regular street so I wouldn't see that hummer. So I would run into that hummer, head on and take us both out. But God had something, he turned what he had for his good. What he had planned for, for my bad, God turned it around. So I say this to, to tell you, please believe Satan is real. When you start doing things of God and you start walking in the way that God wants you to walk, Satan will try to take you out. He's not going to play with you. And that was my first time and now I am aware of him. I'm ready for him. Come on with it, Satan. Because I stay prayed up. I keep on my armor. And you will not do that again. That will not happen again. So that was my first, my first encounter with him trying to take me out as far as me doing uh, doing the work of the Lord, the spiritual uh, uh, releasing people. Um, when you're in this in this field of deliverance, you have to be very careful because you what you do, don't believe that Satan is not going to get mad because you're taking what he has what he has destined for himself. He had his hands on him completely. God said, "No, you can't have that." When I I, I want that one too. And he showed me what I needed to do because I can do nothing without God. Come on. I can't do anything without him. I'm just a vessel for him to come through and use me and save his people. Come on. That's why I love deliverance. I love him to use me and show me what it is that you want to set free in a person. That's why when he gave me these, these uh, uh, prayers last week that I was a little perturbed that I didn't have them in copies and that I was um, that I wasn't able to to uh, for you to be able to say these because evidently he sees something that I don't see and it, and it must be something that he wants done that I can't see okay. and I'm going to be obedient and we will we will say these prayers um, because you have to realize renunciation comes when we've been to different ministries, we've come into covenant with that person in that yes. ministry wow. that, we've, that we've been to. Wow. And we don't necessarily know what kind of spirit that ministry's in. Yes. We don't know if that pastor or that apostle or, or whoever that person is that's in leadership of that church is in the right spirit with the Lord. Yes. And we've come into covenant with that. And we need to renounce some of those things. Um, ungodly soul ties. When we know that a person like like that that gentleman that was under witchcraft, he was staying at a friend of this person who did the witchcraft out of his house. And I just had to be honest. As a deliverer, I'm going to be bold and I'm going to say what thus said the Lord. You knew what she was doing. You knew what she was doing and you came into company with him. You knew she had put witch, witchcraft on him. And you did nothing. And you're supposed to be a child of God. Why would you do something like that? Why would you allow something like that to even happen to one of God's children? To see them suffering, to see their minds being tormented. Our battlefield is not out here in the world. Our battlefield is in our mind. Because just as well as Satan can talk, I mean, as God can talk to us, Satan talks too. That's right. Satan talks too. That's, That's called right. rap shackle. He talks to you just as well as God talks to you. So you need to know the difference between his voice, voice? and God's voice. Hear my voice. And God's words, that's what it says. Hear my, my sheep voice. hear my voice. But if you don't know God's voice 
and you're listening to the devil's voice, you will think that you are listening to the voice of God, and you're not. God is not going to tell you to do nothing wrong. He's not going to tell you to do nothing out of his will, and he's not going to tell you nothing that doesn't go with his word. If it doesn't line up with the word in the Bible, it's not of God. That's right. It's not of him. That's right. Jesus came so that we that to put the light inside of us. So that light inside of us, the enemy can see it afar off. He can see it. He knows who we are. So we need to be very discerning on who he is. Now we have to fill ourselves up with the word. And if we know the word, as it says here, all right, first we need to, after we've cleaned out the house, we clean the house up, we have to follow up with the word of God. And we have to keep ourselves filled with the word of God. Just like it says, I, I believe I told you that when that's Luke, Luke 11 and 24, when it says, when, a, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man and he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding, not, finding none, he saith, I will return unto my house, which I came out. And when he comes, he will find it swept clean and he will come back with more, seven more, worse off than he was. So you're going to be in a worse state than you was. And I will explain it to you again what I mean by that. When someone has delivered you and gone in and taken out all these things in which you have been harboring in you, you must now fill yourself up with the word. You must read that word, eat that word, sleep with that word, walk with that word, Drink, dance with that word. However you get that word and you get that word and you keep that word in so that spirit does not return back to you with seven more deadlier than him. Now you're in a worse state. That's the follow-up. After you've been delivered, the follow-up is to continue in the word of, of the Lord. And I'm going to go here. Um, like I said, Faith is definitely our key. We must have faith that God, that when someone comes to us and lays hands on us and we're taken through deliverance, we must believe and trust that God has taken those things from us, that we no longer possess these things, but you also must not go back and pick it up. Come on, guys. You must not go back. If I've been delivered, I'm not going to go back to the person or the person's in which I've been around. I am now going to surround myself with godly people, on, with the same like mind, on, so that they can help me grow, on, so that they can help me in his word. Come on, now. now, if I go back to them people who had already had me in a state of nothingness, and I go back to them, I'm going back to nothingness. So now, I bring and pick those things back up. We cannot go backwards. When we get delivered, the last thing you want to do is go backwards. You must go forward. And forward you must go. And you must surround yourself with people of same like mind. It doesn't mean that you have to be with people that's been delivered. Meaning that you need to be with godly people. People that can give you uh, instructions. People that can tell you when something's going on. Can give you a, a word or give you a scripture to go to to deal with that. Or even say a prayer for you that will handle what it is that you're going through. You must deal with people of same like mind. You can see the power of God resonating in you the strong when you when you get into his word because you will become stronger and stronger and stronger when you're in the things of the devil you're not strong you're weak because he's beating down your immunity he's beating down who you are as a person he's taking away what god has destined for you Come on. you need to now go and take that back and the reason how you take that back is you get into god's face lord what is it what is your plans for me what is it that you want me to do? What way do you want me to walk? Allow the, the Holy Spirit to lead you. You must, and, and, I, and I, 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 I have to say this, when you get into God's word, it is imperative that you get the Holy Spirit so that you may speak to God in your heavenly language that only you and God know. The devil can't intervene with that. The devil can intervene with our regular prayers. 
He can snatch them up before they get there, but he can never snatch up our heavenly language. He doesn't even know what we're saying, neither do we. But God knows what we're saying. It is very important to have your heavenly language where you can speak to God for your spirit. Your spirit can tell God what it is that you have need of. You, God and your spirit are one. And God resides inside of you. Uh -huh. So that spirit man, for that spirit man to get strong, you need your heavenly language. Spend hours at a time praying in your heavenly language. Laying before the Lord, just praying in tongues. Yes, when you first start speaking in tongues, it may seem as though you're speaking um, from your flesh. And that it does originate. But the more you do it, the more the Holy Spirit will begin to take over. And then he will now be speaking because your language will change. It will shift from what you initially started it into your heavenly language. And when I first got my heavenly language, I wasn't able to do it on cue. If, if the pastor was saying, okay, everybody go into your heavenly language, I was standing there looking around at everybody because I wasn't able to, to do mine on cue. I wasn't able to just go in and start speaking in my heavenly language. But once I started speaking in my heavenly language when I'm at home, when I'm in my private time, when I'm in my car, when I'm just, just me, just, I, 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 I just start speaking it. And then I found myself saying, oh my God, it's, it's changing. It, it switches up because you will now have a warfare spiritual tongue that when you're in war, when you're warring against those spiritual battles that you're having and you start speaking, your, your, your spiritual tongue will change and it will go into a different realm because now it's in a fight mode. But when you're just talking to God and just, you know, praising him in your heavenly language, you may find yourself bringing, you, you might start to cry because your spirit is crying out to the Lord. But when you're fighting, you'll, you'll, you'll notice your stance will change. Your whole, your whole demeanor will change. Just like you fought in the streets, you will fight in the Lord, but your spirit man will do that fighting. A lot of battles are not our battles. They're spiritual battles. Right. Some of them are for the Lord, but That's we right. try to fight them in the natural. Right. We look at our circumstances and say, okay, I'm finna fight this. I'm finna go in. I'm, no, I'm finna put this book up because he's doing what he want to do. Come on, come he's not on. even here. Come on. You want to fight them battles, and you want to go and fight when you're not supposed to be fighting. You need to sit down and pray. Daddy, what is it that you want me to do? Do you want me to go into spiritual warfare? Do you want me to just pray, or do you want me to just stop? We all are assigned warring angels. A lot of people don't know that we have them. We have warring angels that are standing like this here, just waiting on you to say, Father, release the warring angels to fight on my behalf because I know not what I fight against. And you can bet your that you can bet that God has sent them things out and they are fighting for you. Right. They will fight for you. Right. You have to ask the Lord God, please release the warring angels yeah. on my behalf. Yeah. We all have them. Yeah. We all have our own warring angels. I'm not going to use Pastor Liz's warring angels. I'm not going to use Minister Lane's warring angels. I'm not going to use Pastor, uh, Pastor Patricia. Well, I'm going to use my warring angels. Right. Father, release my warring angel yeah. to fight on my behalf. Yeah. We all have them, and we just know that, that we have the victory. The victory is already ours, but Jesus died on the cross. He died on the cross for all of our sins. And we, as long as we go to the Lord, no matter how many times we make mistakes, no matter how many times we fall, get back up. Lord, please forgive me. Forgive me. I am so sorry. And he's going to forgive you because Jesus is sitting right there on the right hand side you know they don't know no, you know they don't know no yes. better. Yes. He's sitting right there. Yes. He's interceding for us. Yes. Just like we intercede for people out here in the natural. Hallelujah. We intercede for our brothers and our sisters. When we see our brothers and sisters going through stuff, we intercede for them. We pray for them. Hallelujah. That's called intercession. When we pray for a person. If somebody's going through something, we okay, I'm gonna call my brother Leon, yo. Um Come into agreements with me for we can pray for something. Liz, come into agreements with me for good. Because the word says where two or more gather in my name, he is just to do it. So we all come together. My brother, um, when I say he did a mean class yesterday on, on, on unity, we must come together. Yes, we yes, have to come yes, together on yes, one accord. Yes. And if we come together and we link up like this here, you see this link? Nothing. Satan, his imps, nothing can come through that. Because God is powerful. He's more powerful than anything in this yes, world. Yes, yes. And as long as we link up with one another, oh. he can't come through and do nothing. Oh. But stand back there and look and be like, I can't believe he got them unified. That's his whole purpose. He don't want us to become unified. He don't want us to come together. He wants us to be separate, talking about each other, fighting 
one another. He don't want, because he knows that we come together, boy. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He knows we come together. He's in trouble. He's in trouble anyway because we have a victory. But a lot of us don't know that we have the victory. A lot of us don't know our power. That's why it's important that you know delivery. For you can keep yourself delivered. If you see your own girl go through such a deliver her. Go to the word. If you're in the word and you know the word, you'll know some prayers that you can say to her, that you can have her say that will deliver her. God's word alone can deliver you. Yes, yes. You don't need to go to nobody have nobody laying here. Get in that word. The, the scripture tells you everything to keep you free. Come on, come on. That's just like the TV. You got a TV, you got a remote control. Told you what you have to go to. Go in the Bible. I'm tell you what, 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 which one you need to read, which one you got to do, which one is going to set you free. Read that one. Marinate on it. It says meditate on my word day and night. Day and night. Day and night. That means meditate on his word. Get that word in you. Meditate on it. You meditate on TV. You meditate on music. You meditate on running around here after these little girls and these little boys. You meditate on that. Oh, I'm finna go talk to Jimmy. He lied to me. I see the way he was looking at me. If you can meditate on him, meditate on that word. I'd rather eat the word every day. I promise you I'd rather eat the word every day. Because he's gonna keep me. He's going to keep this vessel, this temple. This is your temple. Yes. When people when, when, when people are in the church talk about your temple, we're not talking about this temple. This is the temple in which God dwells in. That's right. This is the temple. This is the church. That's right. This is the church. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. And you got to keep your church right. That's right. You can't just let anybody right. come into your church. Precious. This is your church. Precious. You got to keep your church right. Yes. You got to keep your church right with the Lord. Yes. Don't do nothing unless he say do it. Yes. Everybody hears the word of the Lord. You just got to know it's him. Yes. He speaks to all of us. Yes. He gives us all directions. Yes. He gives us all understanding. People, uh, back in the old days, they'll say, um, your conscience. It's not a conscience. It's God. Come on now. It's him. Come on now. He's the one that tells you. That's that Holy Spirit inside right. you telling you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You better not do that right now. Don't, don't, don't do that. But the devil, who's in, in here too, said, girl, go on do that. Don't worry about nothing. Ain't nothing going. You better go ahead and do that. Ain't nothing going to happen. And because we're in our flesh and we don't know the things of God, we're going to listen to what he's saying. And I need you to understand this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I need you. He, he needs you to understand this. That your soul will follow whichever one is stronger. Come on now. If your flesh is stronger than your spirit, your soul will follow your flesh. Yeah. If your spirit is stronger than your flesh, your soul will follow that. Your soul follows whichever one is stronger. Yes. It follows which, So that's why it's imperative that we get our spirit fed on a daily basis, get our spirit strong. I mean, when I first started going to church, I'm like, whoa, why we got to go every day? What the, whoa, whoa. boy, I'm tired of going to church. I don't even want to go. But I had got to the point that if I didn't go, I didn't feel right. I felt funny. Or oh, I'm calling up my brother, Liam, what y'all did in church today? What, what I missed? Um, I should have went myself. But because I was listening in here, telling me, girl, you, you ain't got to go going for they ain't gonna do nothing talk about the same thing they were talking about before. You ain't finna miss something, but you will miss something every time you don't go. Because you cannot live on a Sunday anointing. You go to church on Sunday, you hear the word, ooh, Lord, gee, that was a good word. That word was so good. He was he said something just for me. If you ain't go to the he might have told you what to do with about what he told you on Sunday. If you didn't go Wednesday, he might have had something else for you to say or whatever day they have Bible study or prayer service or whatever because you always have an opportunity to come to the altar. Amen. There's always an opportunity to come to the altar. Amen. There's always an opportunity to pull that pastor to the side pass by going through some stuff and you please pray for me. But what you need to know that when you go to a pastor apostle or whatever and you ask them to pray for you and they pray for you and then you come back next week and ask them to pray to for the same thing, you done nullified what it was that they prayed for. Because it's now no, no longer any good. Because you done asked them to do it again, which means you didn't believe it the first time when they did it. Right. So you nullified that, that first prayer that they said for you. You have to understand that God doesn't 
still work in your time. So if I pray for you today, just because it doesn't happen for you tomorrow, doesn't mean it's not going to happen. He's going to do it when he sees fit. You may not be ready for him to do it for you yet. You may not be ready for him to do it. He's going to do things when he's ready, in his time. His time is different than ours. And we just need to sit. Like my brother said in class, we need to sit and wait on the Lord. He's going to tell you what you need to do, when you need to do it, and how you want to do it. Daddy, I don't know how we got here, but I'm going to let you do what you do. He said, he said that it, 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 it's imperative that in these times, because these times now, there's so many false prophets yes. coming out. There's false pastors, yes. people that are pointing themselves in positions. Yes. I'm an apostle. It ain't been a dame at all. But because that's what they want to be. And that's what they're calling themselves. But ain't nobody. God ain't told. Did God tell you that's what you are? No, God ain't told. God told you as an evangelist, and you've been an evangelist, and you're still an evangelist. You're not that. But you need to walk in what it is that God called you to walk in. Because if you're walking in the office that you ain't got no business in, you're going to be in trouble. You, you better know what he called you to do. And you better do what thus says the Lord. If he called you to be an usher, you better get to ushering. You better get your ushering, get your usher on, and don't be telling people that you, yeah, I'm fitting to be a, a deacon, and you ain't no more fitting to be nothing. What you need to know is a deacon is an appointed position. A God-called position. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. A God-called position is an apostle, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists, that's five of them. They all need to be in the church at once. All of them. For a church to function. All five of these, these called positions, they're called by God. All those positions need to be in place in the church. They need to be there for the church to flourish and for the church to grow. All these positions need to be in, in, in their position. Now why do you need the, the, the prophets in the position? You need the prophet in the position because the prophet's going to be the one who's going to ward off and tell you when somebody has spirits. They can tell you when there's evil things being done about the church. Why do you have the evangelist? Because the evangelist does the same thing as the apostle does. They can go out, they can set up the church, they can go out, they can bring the people into the church. They go out and they set forth and do church outside of the church. Why do you have apostle? You have the apostle that oversees the church. Why do you have the, pa the pastor? The pastor is your leader. That you are her sheep. You are her flock. His flock, her flock, whatever your pastor is. That is the one that is accountable for your soul. Come on, come on, come on. That one is accountable for you. That is the one that is accountable. That is the one that has to answer to God for you. Because they are your leader. And your teacher is the one that's going to teach you the things in which you need to know of God. But that teacher also has to be taught too. And the teacher is always being taught. You always have to continually stay in the word, continually go before the Lord. Like when I came here today, um, I had a lot of running around to do. My mind was, you know, kind of scattered. I knew what the devil was trying to do. He was trying to scatter my mind for what I had, what God had planned for me to do today. But I said, okay, I need to go and I need to get before the Lord. Whether it's two hours, whether it's one hour, I need to go and get before him so I can know what he wants me to do. When I came here, I still, he hadn't spoken. He hadn't said anything. We worship. He still hadn't said anything. As soon as I opened up this thing and said, and oh, he said, I got you. And he just took over and does what he wanted. He wanted everyone to know. Now, he's definitely saying that these prayers were particular. I guess who, somebody was here in that particular day that needed these prayers. Um, Thank you, Holy Ghost. No, he says we still need to do renunciation. And we need to break curses and cast out generational spirits. And annul some godly soul ties. That's what he wants us to do now. So if you would grab your papers. Um, and I guess the first one we'll do is to unannul un godly soul ties. And we can read these aloud um, so that we can speak them into the atmosphere so the Father can grab them and, and do what he has to do and uh, search our hearts as we say them. So um, mean what you say, I, as I say in the, in the world, and I say it in here. Mean what you say and say what you mean. Um, because God's not a forceful God. If you don't mean what you say, he's not going to He's not gonna do it. Right. So you have to mean it. That's right. And just um, everybody say amen when you're ready. We'll do that one first. 
Then the second one will break the cur uh, uh, break curses and cast out generational spirits. And last but not least, we'll do renunciation. Actually, no, he said we're going to renounce first. Sorry, my baby. I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> we're going to do renunciation first. <laughs> And you can say these prayers as many times as you would like. Um, and like I said before, when I uh, acknowledge my uh, YouTube and Facebook um, followers, if you hear these prayers, you can also say them yourself and free yourself at home. Um, but like I said, I would, I would, you know, just take heed to uh, what I'm saying if you want to keep yourself free, um, so these things don't come and attack you. Your situation, when your situation is certain things, that's the devil. That's not the situation. The, si the situation is what the devil's throwing in front of you to stop you from going forward in the things in which you're supposed to go forward in. So if everybody is ready with the renunciation, we'll start. I renounce all lust, perversion, immorality, uncleanliness, impur impurities, and sexual sin in the name of Jesus. I renounce all witchcraft, sorcery, divination, and occult involvement in the name of Jesus. I renounce all ungodly soul ties and immoral relationships in the name of Jesus. I renounce all hatred, anger, resentment, revenge, retaliation, unforgiveness, and bitterness in the name of Jesus. I forgive any person who has ever hurt me, disappointed me, abandoned me, mistreated me, and rejected me in the name of Jesus. I renounce all addiction to drugs, alcohol, and any illegal or legal substances that has, that has bound me in the name of Jesus. I renounce all pride, haltedness, arrogance, vanity, ego, disobedience, and rebellion in the name of Jesus. I renounce all envy, jealousy, and cavortedness in the name of Jesus. I renounce all fear, unbelief, and doubt in the name of Jesus. I renounce all selfishness, self-will, self-pity, self-rejection, self-hatred, and self-promotion in the name of Jesus. I renounce all ungodly thoughts, patterns, and belief systems in the name of Jesus. I renounce all ungodly covenants, oaths, and vows made by myself or my ancestors in the name of Jesus. Okay, the next one we're going to unknow ungodly soul ties. And let me explain. Ungodly soul ties, like I said, if you um, come into covenant with somebody that wasn't of God, you may not have known that you're coming into covenant with it. And even if, when you doing things, okay, fornication and some of these things that we just named in here, bitterness, hatred, those are ungodly because those are things that are not of God. So we're going to annul them. So for any of you out there that is watching, um, that is viewing this, if you have any hatred or, um, you know, some of us self-reject ourselves or, you know, have pity and all that kind, of, that's not of God. This is going to help you get rid of those things. I impair you to go to a, a church, you know, and maybe get delivered from them. Hopefully you'll come to us. <laughs> but we can help y'all. We love to help y'all. Okay, so let's announce some ungodly covenants. I break and disannul all ungodly covenants, oaths, and pledges I have made with my lips in the name of Jesus. I renounce and break all ungodly oaths made by my ancestors to idols, demons, false religions, and ungodly organizations in the name of Jesus. I break and disannul all covenants with death and hell made by my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break and disannul all ungodly covenants made with idols or demons by my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break and disannul all blood covenants made with sac made through sacrifices that would affect my life in the name of Jesus. I command all demons that claim any legal right in my life through the covenants to come out right now in the name of Jesus. I break and disannul any covenant made with false gods and demons through the occult involvement, any witchcraft in the name of Jesus. 
I break and disannul all spirit marriages that would cause incubus and succubus demons to attack me, attack my life in the name of Jesus. I break and disannul any marriage to any demon that would affect my life in the name of Jesus. I break all agreements with hell in the name of Jesus. I have a covenant with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. I am joined to the Lord and I am one spirit with him. I break all ungodly covenants and renew my covenant to God through the, blood, through the body and the body of Jesus Christ. I divorce myself from any demons that would claim my life through the ancestral covenants in the name of Jesus. I bind and cast out any family demons that would follow my life through ancestral covenants in the name of Jesus. Okay, for those of you who are at home that, have, uh, that are viewing this, um, what that is is that we sometimes have demons that have been released upon us through our ancestors, and we don't know that. Ancestors be grandmama, granddaddy could have did something, great auntie, great uncle Jimmy Joe could have did something down the line. That, that's called our bloodline that will come through our bloodline to attack us, and we don't know why they're attacking us because somebody in our, in our lineage, that's called lineage curses. The uh, generational curses that could have, um, that will come through our bloodline to attack us. So if there was any, they should be gone. If you believe that God has taken them away when you said that prayer. Amen. Okay, the next one is we're going to break curses and cast out generational spirits. Okay, I am redeemed from the curse of the Lord. I break all generational curses of pride, love, perversion, rebellion, witchcraft, idolatry, poverty, rejection, fear, confusion, addiction, death, and destruction in the name of Jesus. I command all generational spirits to come out of my life, come out of my life. In the name, no, he says, I command all generational spirits that came into my life during conception, in the womb, in the birth canal, and thought, and through the umbilical cord to come out in the name of Jesus. I break all spoken curses and negative words that I have spoken over my life in the name of Jesus. I break all spoken curses and negative words spoken over my life by others, including those in authority, in the name of Jesus. I command all ancestral spirits and Freemasonry idols, witchcraft, false polygamy, lust, and perversion to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all hereditary spirits of lust, rejection, fear, sickness, infirmity, disease, anger, hatred, confusion, failure, and poverty to come out of my life in the name of Jesus. I break the legal rights of all generational spirits operating behind a curse in the name of Jesus. You have no legal right to operate in my life. I bind and rebuke all familiar spirits and spirit guides that would try to operate in my life from my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I renounce all false beliefs and philosophies inherited by my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break all curses on my finances from any ancestors that cheated or mishandled money in the name of Jesus. I break all curses of sickness and disease and command all inherited sicknesses to leave my body in the name of Jesus. The, through Jesus, my family is blessed. I renounce all proud inherited fit from my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break all oaths, vows, and pacts made with the devil by my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break all curses by agents of Satan spoken against my life in secret in the name of Jesus. I break all written curses that would affect my life in the name of Jesus. I break every time release curse that would activate in my life as I grow older in the name of Jesus. Now he said that covers everything. Amen. He said that, 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 that right there covers it all. Um, and I believe that. I believe that I am walking now in prosperity because I just released that out of my mouth to the Father. 
Um, and I know that he is just to do what he says he's going to do, and, and I believe him. Um, if you can go online and look for this book, it's called The Demon Hit List. You can go online or you can go, um, if you're in Columbus area, you can go to Lifeways or you can go to um, Books a Million in the mall and get this book. This book will give you the names of the demons and how they operate. It will give you the name, and it goes from A to Z. It'll give you the names of the demons. Um, some of them, I was like, wow, that's a demon? I didn't even know that, you know, I didn't even know 